Barrett looking for the dropping. Barrett nails it. The Blues win. The Blues win. I want you to stand up at home because this is what I did last night when Bowden got that kick. I did a daddy dance. <laughs> Get jiggy with it. Get jiggy with it. Get jiggy with it, Blues. Because we're at home. How hard are we going to be to beat? I love you, Bowden. You and me, brother. <laughs> Breakdown to you by Neurofen Zavance. Available every day at Chemist Warehouse. Tēnā koutou katoa, welcome into the breakdown. Great to have you joining us for another week. Sir John Kerwin joins us, as always, Mills Moleaina and Ben O'Keefe as well. Welcome back to the programme. JK, the daddy dance. Oh, how out. good. How good was it, though? How, what a game, Mills. <laughs> and that the death. Like, I, I also love Dalton Popoli for turning over that ball late. Um, yeah, I, I just thought it was a really good game of rugby. Intense, though. It was pretty intense. Oh, this is a different blue side, isn't it? I mean, uh, I'd love to see your dance every single week. <laughs> <laughs> the daddy dance. Oh, good stuff. But, yeah, I think, man, they're just uh, they're showing something different. I mean, to go over there... And win the way they did in, in Canberra, Ben. That's that's a uh, that's a big, big um, task, sort of big tick. I agree. I think the dance was excellent, but um, <laughs> you know what this game showed us it was a, a small taste of I think what's to come uh, with the quarterfinals, semis, and playoffs. So um, it was test match like, and it was yeah really really exciting to watch and to get to the end like that. Ben, I wanted to ask you straight off that Damien was it was Damien wasn't it the ref? Yeah, uh, Murph, Damien Murph, Damien Murphy. Murph. Yeah. Like I thought he started pretty average and it wasn't his fault like the, the the intensity at the ruck guys were coming in from offside but I thought he really took control especially after half time got way more discipline is it really hard when you're in that situation and it, it is difficult and that's the thing often games that you know start off difficult reflect on on the referee unfortunately um, when actually there's a good process the referees go through so you know players are offside players are off their feet um, you know players collapse the scrum there's a process that the referee is trying to put that back onto the players to say that look this is the, the line in the stand. If you don't improve, there's going to be repeated infringement penalties and yellow cards as well. So that's what I thought he did really well in. He made it really clear what the issues were and then the players adapted. I, I actually just thought you guys just went into half-time and had oranges. And, <laughs> and, 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 we that's, we that's always wait for the oranges to come in at half-time, but no, we've we got 15 minutes now. Like the, the half-time's actually been extended out, so we get a longer time to chat, talk about what were the trends going on the first half and what do we need to do as a team to, to make the second half better for, for everyone. Do you watch the video? Uh, no, we don't, don't watch video, but we have our TMO comes in, so there's all four of us there, and we'll just discuss what, what we're actually seeing in the game, and hopefully we can go out there and, um, you know, make, make better flow in a game that might be pretty tough in the first half. Well, you know whose chair you're sitting in tonight? Jeff Wilson's, of course. You've got to fly the Highlanders fag and just wind JK up the whole night. Yeah, well, look, I'll, I'll do my best just to be impartial. That's, I think that's my job tonight. <laughs> OK, well, let's get stuck into Super Rugby then because there is plenty to debunk after round 14. Super Rugby with Nurofen available at Chemist Warehouse. We're going to jump straight in and look at the standings right now. This is what it looks like. JK just cannot stop smiling because the Blues have confirmed top spot with a week still to go, JK, which is so important because they've got home advantage uh, for as long as they are in the uh, playoffs. Yeah, they... and, and Mills mentioned it. Uh, England 2002 came down to New Zealand, won in Wellington, won a test series away. And I think there's moments for championship sides that they've got to do that. And like you said, Mills, for the Blues to go over, and that's a very good Brumby size, and mm. to win at the death really sets them up. And they actually deserve the home semi, regardless of whether I'm a Blues fan, which <laughs> I am. Um, I think the, it reflects, the table actually reflects the form, except for the Jeff's Highlanders, of course, who... <laughs> are still struggling. They're hot at the moment, JK. I mean, I mean, they've they've now got the top spot. What does Leon, Mac Leon McDonald do? Does he rest players leading into? Because you know the, the next part of it, the quarterfinals, it all comes down to that one sort of game. So does he rest players this week? Against, We've got the luxury isn't against we? the Waratahs. Um, I, I think it's one of those. You know, when you talk about the NRL and they have that. Uh, minor premiership and they get the week off. Some coaches don't like it, some coaches do, but I think it's so intense that you'd have to rest a couple of the guys. I think there's a bit of fatigue out there. I mean, Bodie's had his rest, so he can play. Um, but a couple of the, you know, you probably rotate, but not too much, because you've got you to keep that confidence going. But it's a difficult decision. This blue side showed so much grit, so much heart. And probably in previous years, they may not have won that game. What's changed? What's so different about this team this year? Well, I think like when I've been involved in games or been watching them as, as a referee, 
Um, the difference is obviously they're winning games. So they've got that momentum and that confidence. Um, but they've got you know large players, big ball carriers, and guys that are direct. So Bowden and Barrett direct them around the park, which I think it helps a team. And as you said, it's a Premiership winning team, and they're doing it week in week out. And I think why wouldn't they want to keep that momentum going into the playoffs? I want to ask about Dalton because you mentioned him before, and in fact, his form has, has been outstanding. You know, this season. I've also noticed his calmness when he sort of talks to referees. You know, often when there's a new captain, he wants to stamp his mark early, and that sort of sometimes comes across as talking too much. He's not a player that's uh, that's, that's done that. Has, have you been impressed by the way he's sort of kept in the side? I, I have been impressed because I think this was the first year that he did really take on that captaincy responsibility. And so, you know, he was actually asking a lot of questions after games on how he could be better. Week in, week out, from week one to probably week two or three, he worked out, OK, what's his style? And I think that it definitely benefits teams when they've got a good captain that can have a good relationship with, with the referee. And it might be the one percenters, but, you know, that's just... It's definitely helped that, that team to be as dominant as, as probably they've been. JK, what do you think has changed in this team? Because they're on a record run. 12 straight wins. You're smiling. First time they've done this, though, since 1997. Ah, uh, Bowden Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think that three years ago there was an injection of really good quality young players that quite possibly would have left in the past. Mm. Dalton Popoli, Caleb Clark, you know, there's this whole group of under 20 players that were really passionate about, um, you know, about the Blues. And I think they've come through and, you know, Leon's brought a discipline um, to the back room, when I say the back room, um, rugby people is not just turning up on sad day, it's actually studying your opposition, understanding your game, doing the little things. And when you listen to them talk, they talk about winning on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And so I think we have a really, I mean, I think Mark Talia Mills, with Caleb out apparently for several weeks, which means um, more than one and less than four, when I thought it meant seven weeks. But anyway, <laughs> several weeks, people. There's something for you to write down. Uh, you know, does Talia come into the All Black frame? Oh, I think he, he, he does. I think in, in terms of the way he's played, his consistency, the way he sort of, um, you know, controls the game, but how busy he gets. I, I love the fact, you know, to go on your point, I think Leon McDonald's has really built a, a great squad over those last three years, but he's also had the backing of the board. You know, in my opinion, I think you know the Blues area, their franchise is the hardest to keep that keep that cultural side because the dynamics of it being you know you know Northland and, and North Harbour and in, in Auckland to, to keep you know the board has done a fantastic job you know, along with you know with Hori, Andrew Hori, you know the, the CEO and bringing it together to believe in a coach. But this hasn't just been something that's been built this year. It's been those those three years and, and, and believing in the coach and what he's brought through. So he's got a really nice settled side, but he's also got a, a board that's that's really you know backing him in terms of the decision he's making. Do you reckon we just saw the Super Rugby final over the weekend? I think it'd be close. It'd be close, but, you know, that's the, one of the beauties of, I think, you look at the top eight and potentially who could, you know, it's not guaranteed who's in the top eight yet. But once we get to playoff games, any one of those teams could beat another team. And then I think that's the beauty of the competition this year. I'm really looking forward to that, um, you know, the next few weeks. Highlanders. Highlanders. Could be Highlanders Blues, mate. What do you reckon? <laughs> Jeff, where are you? <laughs> Jeff, are you at home, mate? What's going on? <laughs> Um, you're not here, and your Hollanders are in trouble, mate. They're in big trouble, son. I'm telling you. Not here to defend himself. It's harsh. Um, yes, we know that Caleb Clark is out for a couple of weeks with a hamstring injury. But if we're talking about injuries, Sam Kane went off as well for the Chiefs. You were down there for that game. Worrying signs for the All Blacks. He walked off. Does that maybe make things a little bit better with that knee injury? Yeah, we sort of... Um, like I saw him as I walked off after the game, and, and he said he was OK, but you, you never know until mm. actually it's pro properly assessed. You know, the next day, once you've had some ice on it. So... Um, look, I hope he's back. He's a big player for the team. He's a big player for the All Blacks that we need as well. Um, so it'll be, it'll be interesting. Um, and, you know, hopefully it's only for anyone. It's only for a, f a few weeks. Yeah, he, he wouldn't have wanted to get injured because he's also under pressure. There's some really good guys standing up and, you know, Dalton's breathing down his neck and, <laughs> you know, he's a competitor, Sam, and, he, and he's had a, a difficult run the last few years. Came back last year. So, you know, he just doesn't want any... Any little niggles, amels, eh, you know, when you're trying to get back or, or trying to trying to show some form. You know, he's all, current All Black captain, although Whitelock did it at the end of the year. You know, he, he'll be. You don't need those two weeks off to get. You know, it's the whole stuff around it, the fitness. You know, the the, the game continuity fitness. as well. I mean, he's just getting himself back. His team starting to you know hit their straps as well. He didn't want to go off. I mean, I almost thought, thought he was trying to find some blood so he could go get it checked before he comes back on. But it's encouraging that he walked off. I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, any time that you can walk off on your own without being sort of um, helped off. That's encouraging. It's just the extent of it when once all the bruising goes down. So fingers crossed, um, you know, for his sake, but also, you know, not only just the Chiefs, but also All Black Rugby.
OK, well, let's talk about uh, second fives because Quinta Pye was outstanding uh, in Hamilton. Three tries, uh, but his combination with Bryn Gatlin, it was so good, wasn't it? I think he looked, he looked, he looked great, and I think... Um, you know, he scored early on, but he just kept playing, he kept running straight, and that's what we what we need with New Zealand rugby, you know, a player that can carry the ball like that. So um, he's definitely putting his hand up, and I think at the right time as well. I liked his angles, Mills, when you've played more in the midfield than me, but I think uh, early in the season he was trying too hard to be possibly something he wasn't, and now he's just got back to... I mean, he, I call them tough shoulders. You know, he's running inside hard. He knows he's going to be running in between two players. So he's hitting form at the right time. It's almost like he's sort of gone out and picked specific things to really focus on. You know, he struggled at the uh, early part of the season, got pushed out to the wing, even out to the, to the bench. The coaches sort of dropped him a couple of times. But now he's finding that real, really nice rhythm. And the pleasing part about that is leading into the finals. And that's when you need your big-time players. You've you just lost Anton Leonard Brown. You know, you've got, um, you know, it's some um, competition within the teens. And also, so it's a chance for a, a young All Black to really step up and, you know... It, right at the right time of the season. That's what you want from Quinto. I'm glad he's hitting his straps. Well, you know how much competition there is in the loose forwards as well. And at the start of the season, there was so much talk about Peter Garcia-Wakula. Is there as much hype? Is there as much talk about him? Look, I think there should be. Um, he, he's been playing well week after week for the Chiefs. You know, the Chiefs are going to be um, a big team in the playoffs as well, and he's a big part of it. You know, the way that he can carry the ball off that scrum. Um, I haven't seen a, a number eight do it with his style in a long time, so um, he, he's, he still impresses me. Does he make the team, JK? I think he's been very good for Hoskins Satutu, who has actually picked up his game in the last five weeks, because I'm pretty sure that they'll be in competition. Um, I, I would take both. I just think Peter Gus so cool, gives us just something a little bit different. I mean, like I said, I think Hoskins has got back to the reason he was picked a couple of years ago. He's hitting guys, he's working hard over the ball, he's carrying hard. But this, this, you know, Peter just gives us something a bit different, Mills. You like to br even bringing him on late in a test match. Yeah, he does, and he's really matured. You now that's what we've sort of seen. He's probably plateaued a little bit, and every guy's sort of different. You know, Hoskins has come in. He's sort of taken his time to get to the to the form he has. Probably a little bit of pressure as well. Watching Peter Gus, Peter Gus came out with a hiss and a roar, and then all of a sudden he sort of just plateaued a bit, and then has come back into form. So I think when you look at the All Blacks, he brings something really different. You know, he can he can ball carry. He brings some excitement. He jumps over players. He some balls. <laughs> around the corner. So I, I think, um, you know, he's definitely in the, definitely in the sort of uh, conversation bracket. OK, well, there are some big games coming this weekend. The Chiefs have almost, Mills, almost secured a home quarterfinal. But, of course, one more game still to go next weekend for each team. Round 15 of Super Rugby Pacific. This is what the points table looks like if you need a reminder. So top eight makes the quarterfinals. Top four gets home field advantage for at least the first round. But if we look at games to come next weekend, there's some big ones. No one can... Replace the Blues, JK. I That's know. important. <laughs> you know, you've done I the know. calculations. Uh, but the Bru Crusaders and Brumbies still battling it out for that second and third spot. Chiefs and Hurricanes as well, battling it out for that final quarter final spot at home. Yeah, I think like the hardest thing for me is um, like Moana Pacifica upsetting someone, and that's going to be pretty hard uh, when they're playing Tuesday and then they're playing against the Brumbies. So, you know, I think it's going to be um, a fight for the bottom not a fight for the top four. We talked about the Highlanders, right? Because obviously that loss tonight throws a little bit of uncertainty in there. The force can still make the top eight. They've got two games to come this week. One here in Auckland against Moana Pacifica and another one back at home against the Hurricanes Mills. That's massive, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, how, how long has their tour been? I mean, and to come off those last, those big sort of, um, you know, vic, vic, well, sort of defeats and then go into a Moana Pacifica game on Tuesday and say, hey, man, if we win this and get five points out of it, we're going home and we're really sort of challenging. So the Highlanders have actually opened up a spot for them. So that'll be encouraging for them and given the fact that they'll be, they'll be down in sort of motivation. And that will, the thing is that they're a very good team. So I've been involved in a few games that they've, been, they've played in the last few weeks. And they're a very good team. They coach well. They've got some good players. They actually they will be confident going to this game against Moana Pacifica because you know you want to end a tour on a high, don't you? And even though the scorelines suggested that um, you know they were beaten by plenty over the last few games, they're better than that. And I think they know that, so they're going to play Moana Pacifica, and I think it's going to be good. Uh, talk about that, the Chiefs, though. Yeah, I it's mean, an interesting game, isn't it? I mean, you go over there. That's going to be. T I mean, we've seen the game when the Highlanders were over there, and that was in Suva. Lord Tok Tokka. Now there's thunderstorms. Yeah. Thunderstorms. I mean, have you seen the ground there? <laughs> 
And Carver Mills. The Fijians, they love to play in the, in the old you know, the wet weather. They can pick the ball up like it's dry. So I think the, the Chiefs could be up for a big one. Big one in, in, um, over there. Yeah. I mean, you've been over there. You've refed over gets, there. You know yeah, what it it's like. Um, referee boots don't come in 25 <laughs> minutes, Briggs. So it's going to be an interesting one. Do you reckon, JK, do teams rest players this round? Do the Blues rest players? Do the Crusaders and Brumbies, do they rest players going into uh, what will be a massive quarterfinal week? I think, I think resting is part of how you manage the season. So I think each team will have a different um, philosophy to it. You know, the Blues will probably go, OK, we've got a round, it doesn't really matter, so I might rest a couple. Other teams will be going, actually, I need to win this. So, you know, there'll be teams, like I said, Mills, lower down the, lower down the rung, you just got to get them to this top eight. So the Force will be playing everyone. Um, the Highlands will be playing everyone. But also what, what I've noticed, Mills, is that, like, the good sides have people to turn over and it doesn't make a huge difference. Yeah. You know, whereas some of the other sides, and you mentioned it before, Ben, you know, the Force just don't have really the depth that other, some of the other squads do. Oh, I think the Blues have earned it, haven't they? Isn't it the whole reason? I mean, they'd, they'd much prefer to go into this last round with Crusaders, knowing that they've, hey, they've, this is the whole reason we had, you know, um, you know, the round robins to get us to this point. We don't want to go in there having to win one more game to get home advantage. So I think they've got the luxury of being able to rest some of their big, big players that have played some big, um, you know, big minutes. And then, you know, start, they've got to look ahead. You know, everything now is about one game at a time. Once this round robin finishes, any team can pick, pick you. Uh, are we going to talk about Crusaders or no one? No, we're going to bring that <laughs> up. You want we? to? Well, no one's talked about them, which is probably the first time which... in 25 years. <laughs> They'll love that, though, won't they? They'll, They'll love, love it. just flying under it. the radar. They and will all love their it. But on the blue. I mean, I'd be interested to see what you think, Ben, because you're out there often and you can feel the rhythm of the game. But for the first time ever, I've seen inconsistency in their 80 minutes. Yeah, look, I mean, they they they'll probably agree to that as well. If you, you know, a few weeks ago when they played the Waratahs, um, but you know, every time that you say that about the Crusaders, they have a knack for being able to come back, especially um, in playoff games. You know, so quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, they'd be the most experienced team in all of those teams that have, have been in there. So they've got the same coaching staff. They've got some good leaders there. Um, you know, you can never say that they're going to be. Um, you know, the wheels are going to be falling off because they can do it every single year. And I think, you know, it's important because still, people, all teams still have to win games. They all have to get bonus points. They all have to get actually point differentials as well. So they want to be scoring tries still. It's all going to be important for semis and finals. We've always talked about the Crusaders. Come on, we're <laughs> going to be talking about them again, man. Let's just, for the next just, month. Just plug some other teams for once, eh? <laughs> well, Move you know on. What? Move on, we're moving off the Crusaders. <laughs> I can't wait for our next chat. There is still plenty more to come on the breakdown after this. We chat your All Blacks 9-10 combination. Uh, take a guess who these guys are picking, because you will find out right after this. Uh, but first, we've got a lovely story from Kevin Mialama with some of his uh, favourite jerseys. This man who has done so much, not just community in this city, a great supporter of some very worthy causes, unfailingly pleasant to deal with, a real gentleman of the game, not just a great rugby player, a great citizen, Kevin Mialamu. First jersey I've got to share with you today, team, uh, will be my um, first 15 jersey, Old Eddie College. I was lucky enough to play fourth form all the way through to seventh form. This was given to me by a, a good coach and a good friend of mine, uh, Jeff Moon who's no longer with us, but um, you know, he's, got a, he's got a special place in my heart and, uh, and I know in a lot of other players' hearts as well. But he would always call me the seven horse and uh, this, this is why he's given me this jersey. It was actually Jeff Moon that um, suggested to me that I'm not gonna go any further uh, in, in rugby if I stay at seven because I wasn't getting any taller. So um, yeah, he was the one that helped me transition uh, positionally and um, helped me, taught me how to throw properly. So. Jeff was a big influence in me moving to hooker. Yeah, when he suggested going into the front row, I was I was quite stunned actually, because when you think about front rowers, you have this picture in your head of like um, big, strong men or athletes, and I didn't think I fit the profile. And so when I look at it now, um, it was quite revolutionary for him to actually think that um, I could play in that position. It took me a long time to actually learn how to scrum properly, so I had a, for the first couple of years, my neck was, I was doing a lot of this. Nick was quite stiff for the first couple of years. 
I played alongside my brother as well. So this jersey is important to me because it's where I went to school. I was lucky enough to be a head boy at Old Eddy College as well. And, you know, to see our team um, still doing well in the, in the A grade, I'm, I'm really proud of how far they've come as well. So I'll always save with this jersey. I was lucky enough to play for play seniors for Odahu. When I used to travel around the world, somewhere I picked up the nickname uh, the Odahu Nugget, and it stuck with me. I've met people in Rome before when I'm walking around the Colosseum, and uh, uh, people shouting out, "Oh, the Odahu Nugget!" Well, Kiwis, of course. But um, yeah, it's just amazing to think that um, when you get nicknames, they stick. One of my most awesome memories was being able to win the championship in 2000 with um, the Odahu Rugby Club. I was playing alongside my brother again, so that, that was a really proud moment for us. My brother was always my protector. He's still a protector today. You know, it's funny how I always saw him on the field and, and in life as a protector, but now that's what he does. That's his profession. It was awesome to play alongside brother. Always felt safe, and um, we always had a, a great connection and bond on the field as well. You know, we were there representing where we came from. We had a strong identity. We're from the south. We wanted to be strong. We wanted to be... Uh, feel us on, on the field and I think we were able to in those couple of years that we were we played together. Mialamu, look at the pass! Kevin Mialamu dragging him there and I think he's made the hands. Kevin Mialamu, we're going to see and hear a lot more about this guy. A very special jersey to me. If I can think about uh, my first year playing for Auckland, I can still remember as a youngster watching uh, Sir Michael Jones um, scoring tries at the 1987 World Cup and uh, to be named alongside him to play in the 99 um, NPC. I was in a lot of war going to trainings. I was always um, at my best because I knew that's, that's what it uh, took to be able to play alongside players that played in this jersey. And I understood um, the legacy that, that, that came before me, so that was really important for me that when I had a chance to wear this jersey, I, I wanted to fill it well. I think four, four championships in this jersey. Uh, a lot of good people that I played alongside in this jersey as well. I'm born and raised in Tokoro, and I'm proud of where I come from, but um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proud Aucklander. So uh, this jersey I'm lucky enough to share with you. Sorry, it's in a big frame, but um, it's another jersey that means a lot to me. Uh, it's my 50th jersey I played for the Blues. I think to be able to have some quotes from my uh, teammates, from my, from my good friends, um, it's quite special when you when you get to see what they how they feel about you and what uh, you're lucky enough to achieve with them. You know we've got uh, Curtis Hoyu on here as well, a good friend of mine that's uh, not, no longer with us. Growing up, I loved watching the Blues, especially you know the winning the first two titles. It was the way they did it, the way they played, um, exciting brand of rugby, and that's why I wanted to be able to play in this jersey and do the same thing as as my Auckland jersey, as my All Black jersey, and fill the jersey as well. The Blues have won the Super 12 title in 2003. Oh, a huge year for me. We were lucky enough to have Peter Sloan was our, our coach and so was and Ted had come on board as well. We had a, we had a good coaching group, but uh, we had a, a really exciting team. And I think at the head of that was uh, Xavier Rush, uh, the man that led, led our team very well that year. But yeah, we were, we were an exciting team. We played, um, even looking at our Blues now, we played a similar style, which was um, keeping that ball alive, good interplay from forwards and backs. It'd be really good rugby to watch, quite exciting. They've been a big part of my life. I played a lot of games for the Blues. You go through the ups and downs, and you just got to keep getting up and, get, and giving your best. And that's what I, I always look to do, and especially this jersey, but in all the jerseys that I played, I played in. Now that I've finished, you really look back on, and when you see these things, you feel really proud to be able to share these moments, uh, not only with family, but with guys on the field. You pretty much go to war with them. You leave everything on the field. You walk off, uh, whether you win or lose, and uh, you go back and you know that next week you've got another opportunity to do that again. Well, team, that's my Jersey Tales. Thanks for letting me share it. That's another beautiful story from our producer, Jim Kay's uh, Jersey Tale, Kevin Mialamu. No All Blacks jerseys are there because you know his All Blacks stories. He wanted uh, you to hear his how he got to the All Blacks. And Mills, you were along for the ride with him for many of those years. Oh, brilliant, brilliant man. I think um, you know, he, he really, what he sort of says here and sort of what he shares, um, you know, he, he epitomises sort of the, the culture and the style that, um, you know, and, um, you know, what was with, with the Blues. And so to see him there and to see him celebrate some of those jerseys, and not an all-black jersey, which is, you know, um, it just says a lot about the man. He's a fantastic fella. Unbelievable. Um, and he was never going to make it, remember? They sent him down the road to play for the Chiefs. Yeah. Wasn't going to be big enough, wasn't going to be strong enough, wasn't going to be this, wasn't going to be that. Um, and he showed a whole lot of resilience, you know? 
and just kept at it. And he actually transformed the game, Ben. You know, like, when you think about the hookers now, they're out wide stepping and running. Well, yeah. before, before Kevy, there probably wasn't that around. I remember growing up watching him, and he was the first sort of mobile hooker. He was probably one of the first hookers that started jackling for the ball as well. You know, <laughs> so he, he changed the game completely. Um, but, yeah, amazing to see that story. Well, it's time now to chat All Blacks because the debate is raging. It is hot after the weekend. The All Black 9-10 combination. Now, we've asked our panel, who would they be picking to start for the All Blacks? Who's behind that person? And how do they rank the rest of the halfbacks in New Zealand? We'll take a look at what they said. And I think this might interest you. Aaron Smith, everyone. He's number one, isn't he, JK? But it's the second choice that's different. Yeah, look, I think... Um... The interesting thing for me that Aaron Smith, Finlay and Brad Webber are quite similar mills. So, um, you know, if Fakatava was not available, then I would probably go TJ Perinara because we need something different. Um, I think Aaron is under pressure, not as our best, but to actually change his game a wee bit, to start running a wee bit more. But yeah, it's, it, for me, um, Fakatava being available yeah. just gives you something different. Big news this week, wasn't it? that the All Blacks have gone to World Rugby to try and change their eligibility uh, rules, and they've, they've succeeded. It's massive. It's, that's huge. And I, and I want to sort of elaborate more about that, sort of what he brings. It's different. You know, you, when you're looking at a half, you want impact. And what he's done when he's come on for... Every time he's come on for the Highlanders, he's brought that in peace, brought something different. It might, it might be this is a darting game that he, that he does here. You know, put someone into space, he get, gets over the ball as well um, and wins, wins turnovers, but he just lifts to another, another level. So I think what's actually happened down there also is, you know, his passing game has really improved, given that he's with, you know, Aaron Smith. So hence the reason I think, you know, to have someone come off the bench and really bring that, that impact and really challenge too, I think he, he can get to a stage where he starts. That's how good he's sort of um, you know, been for me. So I think something different, um, you know, definitely um, we, we need. Well, what's JK laughing at? Oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Ben this. Cause... Go ahead. <laughs> what is um, it? <laughs> do you think someone who's not starting should be making the All Blacks? Yeah, look, I do. I think, um, you know, how I think Fakatava, for example, has X Factor. And he comes on and, you know, he closed out a game for the Highlanders really, really well. Um, he's gotten rid of the errors, I think, potentially in his game maybe a few years ago. So normally X Factor the players start they start games, don't they? So bringing on a player like that, I think, is you know, pretty fantastic. So um, I, would, I would say yes. I think um, you bring on players for the style of play that you want to play, and I think the All Blacks, you know, they do want to play with high tempo right the way through to the 80th, 80th minute. Do we miss TJ mm. Perinara's leadership, Mills? And is is he playing well enough for that to be a factor? None of you picked him in your top three. Well, I think I just think that the style that we that I think we want to play, um, that it's either him or Fakatava. And I think if you think that Fakatava is going to make the World Cup, you've got to play him this year. I'm not I'm not writing uh, TJ off because he's such a competitor and such a good player. But his style for me is Fakatava. Yeah. But are you going to put leadership ahead? Well, I think you've got you've got plenty of leadership there anyway. I mean, you bring Fakatava, and it's the third spot. You know, if they go for a third, I think Brad Weaver brings something totally different as well. So if you're looking at a similar sort of... If you want to tick a box in terms of saying, OK, well, does TJ bring what Fakatava does? Well, I think Fakatava probably excels in terms of what he does in terms of his impact and his X factor. So then the next bit is, OK, well, what do we want? You know, maybe it's speed. And I, and I think given the quality that we've got, uh, particularly within our forwards, the ball-playing ability that we want to get to and how fit we want to get to, we need to move the ball. We need to move the ball. We need to have a bit, a bit of speed. OK, there will be opportunities where, um, you know, you might snipe around the, around the rucks, but I think when you've got someone like Fakatawa, we've covered that. So um, in terms of ticking the box in, in, in every aspect, I think that's probably why he's, he ends up, you know, either third or fourth. It's an interesting debate, isn't it? Where does Brad Weber sit for you? He's someone that we haven't even mentioned yet. Yeah, look, I, I found this sort of this selection really, really hard because, you know, your top five, we have a depth of talent for halfbacks in New Zealand. And we've got someone like Brad Webber who, you know, I think he's an excellent sniping halfback. He's been amazing for the All Blacks over the last few years as well. Um, and it just shows that, you know, we still have, I think, the best players in the world in New Zealand. So we're having to go, you know, five deep where actually any one of those five players could start and play for the All Blacks. And, you know, it was a difficult choice. 18, I've said it, there we go, 18 tests to go, people. So we know what TJ Perinara can do. Yeah. And I think um, we know, he, you know, I, I wouldn't write him off at all. But I also think we've got to try a couple of these thirds um, during this. So either Christian and Fakatav, they've got to play yeah. in this series.
Yeah, well, Finlay Christie, I thought you were going to mention him first, JK, uh, being at the helm of your blue side. But he's been very, very strong alongside Bowden Barrett, hasn't he? Well, it's, it's great that we're having this debate <laughs> in terms of... The me, problem. I mean, exactly. It's a, it's, a, it's a great problem to have. But Finlay Christie, too, yeah, he poses a big threat as well. I mean, um, what I've loved about him is he's, he's really maturing. He's you know, really quite young, but he's finding his feet regular game time. He's, he's running off some, um, you know, some big forwards. But he's also in a team that's... A bit, of, in a, in a bit of confidence going forward. I'd like to see him under pressure a little bit more and see how he reacts there when they are going backwards. And that's why I think finals football, if he can tick a big box then, I, I think, yeah, he's, he's, a big, he's a big challenge. Ben, you get closer to these halfbacks than any of us do. Uh, who's the lippiest? Who's the one that always comes at you? Oh, look, they're all... I think part of their DNA is that they're all pretty lippy. Um, so if I had to rank them one to five, you know, they'd all be number one in terms of... Oh, there must be one but, that stands nah, out. Look, TJ, all, maybe? No, nah, nah, TJ's been great. Like, he, he, like, TJ knows the laws, and that's the, that's the greatest thing that I think he brings to a team. So he actually does... He doesn't put referees under pressure, but he you know, keeps us on our toes. Must so I think be that's Aaron a good Smith thing for the team. Oh, they're all pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> No, just, just getting back before we talk about something else, just getting back to me, Mills, um, or getting back to you, actually, not to me, but um, when I put Weber and Christie together, that's who I was comparing, not against the others. Mm. So I had to choose between one of them. That's how I sort of did it, because is Christie doing as much... As Webby. As Webby, and Webby's probably more of an incumbent. And my answer was probably not yet. Yeah. OK, well, when we talked about first fives earlier in the season, and last year there was a massive debate between Richie Moonga and Bowden Barrett. But right now, it is clear between all four of us that Bowden Barrett is the best 10 in New Zealand right now, JK. How much is between these two at the moment? Absolutely nothing, and there never will be. What needs to happen, though, is that the All Black... Uh, selectors need to pick one and go. You're our man, because and this is this is my opinion, right? So, um, like my great mate Foxy always says, your team doesn't have to J play JK, and he's right. But I just think it's a position where they need the confidence to know they are the man, right? I think Bowden right now has got that maturity. Um, I think Richie Mwanga is unbelievable, but one of them has to get it, and I think Bowden's um, just a little bit ahead at the moment. If it's anything like 2011 Mills and we go through a ton of first fives, who do you want at the back end? Who do you back? Stephen Donald. <laughs> <laughs> him, well, he's back. back in action, hasn't he? Down. He's been back. Yes. <laughs> That's my answer. No, I know. <laughs> well, it's, it's great. It's another, yeah. it's another great debate as well because the fact is, I mean, they, they, there's nothing in them, but they both play two different styles. And, and, and to go to J JK's point, you want a team to be able to be around their best player that's so, and have sort of that comfort that they're going to be doing that week in, week out. So that's going to come down to the style the All Blacks want to play and who they pick. And Mwanga brings something different. He brings a little bit of X factor in terms of unpredictability. Bowden brings that, that settledness, but then also explodes into a, into a gap. He sort of, sort of just finds his way into it. And, you know, he might be having a quiet game, but he, he makes big moments. So it's going to come down to what the All Blacks say, but that, what the All Black coach's style has been. But also, you know, they've got to have one person, one person only before they start bringing in Stephen Donald. I can't believe you want to bring Beaver back. I'm still shocked by that. Oh, I think it's a great call. But um, <laughs> if, if, you know, if, if eligibility rules come into it and he couldn't come back, I think um, you know, what you said around uh, Moanga and, and Bowden Barrett, you know, they're proven uh, all-black players who have just been fantastic for us over a few years. Um, for me, though, the person that's really um, shone this year is Stephen Pirafetta. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's been unreal with the boot. He's got a laser beam on that um, and has actually come on um, you know, when Bowden Barrett hasn't been playing and, and led the blue ship around the park really, really well. He's, he's been impressive. Can play multiple positions as well, JK? Oh, I think he's a better fullback than he is first five. Um, he might mature into that role, but I think um, you pick him because he can cover both those roles. And, you know, when you think about it, OK, here's the scenario, Mills. I'll throw this one to you. Um, we pick Barrett but then we're either going to pick um, someone who can cover both off the bench. Yeah. You know, does Moanga miss out? You know, because so, you sort of... Stephen Perifeta, um, you know, then you've got Damian McKenzie coming home. So the, the hard calls, right? But at the end of the day, I think Stephen's probably a better fullback than 10 at the moment, but I have him in the team. I, I think he's probably the... Uh, 
the best adjusted in terms of playing fullback and ten. You know, every single time he's gone to fullback, he's he's ex exceeded when he, they put him into ten. Nothing really has changed. He's just his um, his form at the moment is absolutely outstanding. Was you know, in, in other cases, I've sort of had to try to find their feet, and when they go at the back, then they're sort of disrupted a little bit. His his form and, and the way he's playing, the way he's matured, um, you know, has definitely warrants a you know, I suppose a, a discussion around whether he does that. But man, D Max. He's not a bad player either. Still in the conversation, isn't he? What about Bryn Gatlin? He came up from Dunedin for an opportunity in Hamilton and he's getting game time and he's looking good as well. Is he part of this conversation, Ben? I think he's, he's played as part of the conversation this year um, with how successful the Chiefs have been. Um, he's had some really good games with the Chiefs where you know he's been the reason they've won games that have been tight where potentially Chiefs lose those games in previous years because they don't have someone like a Bryn Gatlin driving them around. So he's another player, like I said, in New Zealand. We've got a, a lot of players who's put, who are putting their hands up. Yeah, look, I think uh, Bryn's having his best season. I think he's become a triple threat. So he's actually running, uh, kicking, uh, passing really, really well. I still think he's got a little bit of inconsistency in his game, but not as much as last year. And I think we need to bring him into the All Blacks just to have a specialist, 10, if something happens. I mean, Stephen Donald, you know, that was how, that was our, he was our fourth... He was our fourth 10. So I think we need to make sure that, um, you know, guys are coming into it, learning what they need to do, in those positions especially. Well, uh, JK, you'll remember, it's been 35 years since that famous try against Italy. But you don't know the powerful story that goes behind it. Well, now we do. Back in 87, I scored a try against Italy in the first ever Rugby World Cup. I had time to reflect on what it meant for me, for the All Black jersey, for the game. When I look at the art, I see a very personal story. I see a very public moment. I see me, my soul bared. I see this incredibly confident man on top of his game. But what I did know was I was full of self-doubt. And the backstory is so important to me and something that I couldn't really explain to people. They saw the try, but there's a huge story around how I got there. I'm complicated. <laughs> to create a piece of artwork like this, the only way I could do it was to sit down with Sir John Kerwin and talk to him in depth about that moment. He opened up and peeled back the layers and he was quite happy to expose how vulnerable he felt at the time. All of these things, these different stories he told, go in to create a very rich and interesting and unique piece of artwork. It captures a moment in time where he scored that try at the try of the century, etched down his face, but it becomes symbolic of the inner pain, mental health challenges, turmoil, inner demons, the sharks that he had to, to fight. As much about the try he scored as is about the man behind the legend. This NFT comes in a limited edition of only 14. That was my jersey, my lucky number. The try itself is dissected from 14 different angles. There are 14 different artworks within that video piece, 87 seconds long. Each NFT comes with a case of JK14's Amaroni wine, his favourite. It is an art in itself. It's really powerful, JK. Art's supposed to be powerful, right? Um, and that story was. But tell us more about what an NFT is. Well, I had absolutely no idea about 12 weeks ago. <laughs> and I'd been hearing a lot about, you know, this. Uh, the best way to explain to me, because I need a lot of explaining, was that, you know, it's a digital collector's card. I said, OK, so that's how I started, Mills. And then, you know, um, it's encrypted. It went through a personal journey for me. And it's kept in the cloud, and it's collectors, and it's art, and it's all those things that you, that you think about. Um, but the journey for me was just really, really special because, um, you know, in, in, uh, we spoke about it before we came on air, Mills, you know, the NBA has all their footage. Right, whereas a lot of um, the footage where we played is owned by either World Rugby or other television stations. So to be actually able to create something around that moment for me was really special. And I just love the art. I mean, I, I love art anyway, um, and wine. <laughs> so there were two things that was really interesting. But when I try and learn something, the best way you can learn is by actually jumping in and getting involved. So, um, you know, I think the next thing for me is will it sell or not? I sort of probably think it 
won't, but, um, you know, it's just been a really neat journey. Well, it absolutely will. Uh, they're going to auction. Jump on the website, greatestnft.com, uh, to find out all the details you need to know. Right, time for trivia. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought that was it. <laughs> You're back in the hot seat uh, and you can play at home as well, remember. Uh, right, today, it's not a question, it's what happened next. Now, Faree. Nonu down below, Smith over the top, ball kicked through, snapped up by Wepu, on the charge he goes! Now, Faree. Nonu down below, Smith over the top, ball kicked through, snapped up by Wepu, on the charge he goes! Welcome back into the breakdown. That is your trivia question for today. What happens next? I've got a funny feeling you probably know more than JK. Have you? I, no, I'd like to go Smills because he was out there. Or go to Ben first. OK. Ben, have you oh, got an answer for us? My answer would be, I reckon, I think Mills was uh, maybe ghosting the back line there, gets the inside ball, runs 40 metres under the post. I got is that it? I was out wide, I got this ball right around my sort of shoelaces, had to pick it up, beat another player, a couple of players came across, then um, it's the trial of the century. I ended up scoring, <laughs> apparently. The That's try. an NFT in itself, <laughs> isn't it? I got a horrible pass I think... from Pity. I got a horrible pass from Pity Weepoo, you should see it. Yeah, I think what happened was um, Perry threw a horrible ball and then um, Hoare, Andrew Hoare, kicked it off his boot and someone scored. OK, well, let's have a look. Let's see who's right. Oh, it should be you, Mills. Below, Smith over the top, ball kicked through, snapped up by Wepu. On the charge, he goes, looking for some support. Gets it wide to Molly Lane, a beautiful pass. Molly Aina can do it himself. Well, well. Someone keep that for my kids, because honestly, I do not chase them down these days. I need that inspiration. Well, you're yeah, those wrong. boots, those silver boots, mate. <laughs> yeah. How good were they? No one predicted uh, the frames or the flames either. Close, yeah. very close. Out, out of the back pocket. <laughs> well, you mentioned Beaver. Names like Donald, C. Smith, Gear, uh, Luke Bray. They've all been back in action, back wearing the All Blacks jersey. The classic All Blacks this time, though, in Spain this morning. Paul Flynn leads the classic All Blacks out. A good crowd in here for this contest. Leata, Gia, Andre Taylor, the first try. That's a small opening in the Spanish defence line. And it's Alex Tulo. The boss trying to go underneath, and he does. Irish international. And now Gia, too big and too strong. Counter ruck outstanding. Conrad Smith runs left, oh, kicks good. right for Gia. You can't coach class. How about Conrad Smith? Beautiful hands, Rico. Stephen Donald. Point today. A thrilling game. Celebration of rugby in front of 40,000 people. Amazing. 40,000 people in Madrid. I don't know how you didn't get roped into playing in that one, but JK, you've coached against the classic All Blacks and they've still got it. Yeah, that was, a, you know, um, sort of created by Big Andy Hayden, who I'm really passionate about. But yeah, brought John Olomu to. to um, to Japan and, and Jeff Wilson, so I decided to put Christian Lormanu, the biggest uh, Tongan guy I had in Japan, against <laughs> Jeff, and uh, he's never forgiven me. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Um, but yeah, no, just, just a great concept. Um, hope it carries on because I think it's really, really important and good the, the boys who uh, got over there and actually, well, you, you did the game, didn't you, Mills? Yeah, I mean, it's great to see some familiar faces, you know, um, you know getting back out there and um, and rolling the sleeves up and, and getting that win. Um, obviously, fantastic atmosphere. I mean, the rugby is obviously, um, you know, very, very proud over there at, uh, in, in Madrid, 40, 40 odd thousand people. So, and considering, you know, what we've been through with the pandemic and stuff like that, so great to get the boys got the W. But a little bit concerning that Spain are 15th 
50 yeah. in the world and yeah. they lost And these old a, dogs. I guess, um, Can I call them that? Uh, I won't say There that. wouldn't have been a lot of Gatorade <laughs> drunk either, I don't think. <laughs> so what does that make these guys? Are, are the classic All Blacks now moved to 14th? Or? Get them in the World yeah. Cup. Or what? Do they take over, do they? Well, Beaver, mate, he take, <laughs> kicked it from the corner. He's back in the you All Blacks in your to. team anyway. Back, back. Well, there's been plenty of headlines that have come out of the World 7 Series in Toulouse. And for all the wrong reasons over the weekend, we've got some footage to show you. I'm glad you're here, Ben, because we're going to need clarification on this. But this was a final pool match between Argentina and England, JK. For two minutes, this guy held the ball up. Yeah, Watch no, that's ridiculous. When I looked at it, I thought, oh, that's Trevor Chappell. He hasn't put it down yet. Oh, you remember Trevor Chappell? <laughs> yes. The underarm. I love yeah, the, no, the underarm. Like, it's not our fault, but they'll, they'll, they'll... So, Ben, what's... I mean, the rule says, is this not in the... What's the rule? Like, this is... I've never seen this as a referee before in 15s or 7s. Well, normally you get it at the end of the game, they try and slow it down for maybe 10 seconds, but that's 2 minutes and 7 seconds that yeah. they've time wasted. So there's actually rules against this. I even had to look it up because, you know, we don't get this ever. So, free kick for time wasting or anything against the spirit of the game. And if you look at that, 2 minutes, that's half a... Half in a the sevens game. Sevens. You've got to say that potentially is against the spirit of the game. So that was just bizarre. Like I, I feel for the the referee in there because I wouldn't know what to have done the, um, either. The reason why England did it was Argentina uh, were going through. They needed to win to go through to the quarterfinals. Uh, England needed to lose by uh, no more than 16 points. That means they went through, and uh, uh, Argentina, not not Argentina, Canada were knocked out. Yeah, well, I think Bad that, sportsmanship? you know, the World Sevens, rugby or whoever is in control should have taken their points off them last night. It's not, um, it's not in the spirit of the game. It's yeah. like, it's, who knows if they had a bit of a bet on it? Yeah. You know, you, you don't do that unless you've pre-organised it with your opposition, surely. I can't see how you stand there and you're looking at the sideline and you know to not to put it down in two minutes. That's premeditated. Yeah, That's really dangerous stuff. Yeah, but even Argentina not, not going over and trying to force him to, to put it down, isn't it? The, the whole reason to play a game is to actually win it, not to not go there and sort of force a result. So I'm, I'd like to... I mean, I feel for the referee, you know. I mean, it's, it's always a hard one. But what do they... Who's... Who, who do they go to now? Is it the referee's boss that comes in and says, well, this, should have, this is what should have happened, this is what comes out? Is it World Rugby? I think World Rugby need to do something. I agree with you. They need to come out and you know, slap some fines or take some points off them or something. But in terms of the, the referee now, because now it's just going to happen, isn't it? Everyone's going to referee. Well, that's, that's why it's got to go up to World Rugby. And they've actually got to try and stop it so it doesn't happen again. Because the, the amazing thing about sevens is it's fast. There's lots of tries scored. We had two minutes of nothing happen yeah. and only one try scored. So um, I think there'll be something that will come out of that and um, hopefully because if we have it again, then it's just going to it's going to really change the game. So if it goes up to World Rugby, we'll get a decision for next year, Ben? <laughs> 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 two years, mate. Come on. Sorry. No, but we did tact. Uh, it's, it's really dangerous, not how we want to see our game played. So it'd be nice if World Rugby acted overnight and took their points off them and Canada go through. That is the fair result. Well, there's uh, a couple of big matches still to come tonight. Both of our New Zealand men's and women's teams are in action, which you love, JK, when they can play on the same series circuit together. Uh, the Black Ferns play Fiji. Nia Williams is back as well for the first time in a very long time. She got told uh, a year ago that her career was over, but it has been such a beautiful story, hasn't it, Mills? Oh, she's, and she's such an awesome human being as mm. well. I mean, the way she goes out there, she re wears her heart on her sleeve. She loves the environment she's in. I know she's, she's almost... A, for a lot of them, um, their mother in terms of the way that she sort of acts around there. But what a great story. Yeah. I mean, some, some resilience and um, you know, how she came back. And you've got to remember, this was before the Olympics, you know, when she got told this. So, so heartbreaking tough. because given the fact that the one before that too, it means to miss out on that. So what a comeback. Support our men and women uh, out there tonight. We've got all the action on Sky Sport as well. But time now. Uh, usually we do our final thoughts. We look ahead to the weekend. But it is a very special night for uh, a member of our team, Jim Kays, our producer. He's been with us here on The Breakdown for six years and has had a huge contribution to our show. He does those jersey style tales, the amazing stories that you watch uh, week in and week out. He's our producer. He's been a presenter on the panel Where as is he? well. Where, where, where are, are you, he? Jim? Get He's in here. Hiding. You can't get away with it. He's got to get in here. You've got to get <laughs> in here, mate. We I'll need to, to bring him out. Have you got your shorts and jandals on? But you've did that. <laughs> you did that to the CEO, so you've got to, you've got to come in here. Is that why he's not coming out? Oh, you've he got is to come. coming. He is coming. But it's a special night, isn't it, JK? He's been a significant part of this team. Yeah, and I just think, um, you know, we've got a really neat team here. We've got all the people who you can't see who look after us. Yeah. Cameras and sound, and, and Jim's one of those. And... Um, 
I think the nicest thing that, that Jim's ever done to me has been totally honest with me and told me no, that I, I need to get better. <laughs> you just haven't told me the truth here, mate. You can take that. But just uh, just on behalf of us, mate, it's been a, a great journey. And I, Cheers, bud. I think uh, when you work with someone um, who can be open and honest and confrontational, which is what you and I have been, um, and at the end of it, I can we can all say that we've got a friend. But I know you're not going too far. So. No. No, head of talent and... Um... You're fired. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, do you get a credit card with that? Can you take me out for lunch? <laughs> no, no. Oh, it's a great show, and you guys are fantastic. So, yeah, thanks so much. I'll be watching it now at home, getting told off. Yeah, nice. And then ringing us and telling us how bad we are. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's all good. That's the least I've ever heard you say, Jim. Oh, well, I'm a bit sort of lost for words at the moment. I didn't expect to be coming in here. I would have dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've been so brilliant, and as JK said, thank you for everything over the last six years. But you're not lost to us yet. We're still going to have you around. So thank you so much, Jim Kays. And thank He's not you. really fired. <laughs> thank you as well for joining us on the programme tonight. We do hope you've enjoyed it, and thanks for sitting in, Ben. Thank you've you. Been Always fantastic. a pleasure. Thank Always. You. You've survived, and that's what matters. That's what matters. We will see you back here next Sunday on The Breakdown. Now back goes wide. out for Weber and the Chiefs are going in through two players. Out it goes and now Morgan. Best space here for Julian Sabir and Julian Sabir scores early. Breakdown is brought to you by Neurofen Zavance. Available every day at Chemist Warehouse.